Welcome to this primer on posets. In this lecture, we will define what is a poset and give some examples. We will not be proving any results and only be discussing the definitions. But since the notion of posets is very fundamental to all mathematics, it is a good idea to be aware of them. And the only prerequisite is the uh, idea of relations. We have a few videos on these in the playlist named Kickstart. You can refer to those videos or you can just Google around. It is not a difficult concept. And to f follow those lectures, you know, those videos on relations, you further need to know about sets, which are also available in the same playlist. So this playlist is supposed to be something that, as the name suggests, get you started with higher mathematics. All right, so with that, let us begin. So first, before we define a poset formally, first let us look at a basic example. So a poset is trying to give the notion of order on a given set. And uh, we already know an example of order, namely on the set of integers. So the set of integers are these. And we already know how to compare things here, right? We know what it means to say 2 less than equal to 3. So we are already familiar with a notion of ordering on integers. Let us just note a few properties that this symbol enjoys. So the first property is n less than equal to n for all n. Right? That is, that is there. Second is if If two integers are both less than equal to the other, then they are equal. And lastly, if m is less than equal to n and unfortunately o is a very bad symbol, so I will have to resort to p. So if m is less than equal to n and n is less than equal to p, then So these three properties are, um, I mean, they hold. There is also an extra property. So if m and n are integers, then either this or that, or both of us, both happen if and only if m and n are equal. So these four, for these four properties uh, hold, and the in in the notion of a poset, we will be retaining these three properties and relinquish the last one. So now we will make this precise. So what is a poset? Before we answer that, first we will not uh, first we will uh, note what is a partial order. So let P be a non-empty set. A partial order on P is a relation which we denote by uh, this symbol and this symbol of course we just saw in the context of integers but we are now abstracting that uh, the properties out so now do not do not associate any meaning to it apart from what we are going to discuss okay so a partial order on p is a relation which we denote by this symbol uh, such that three properties are satisfied. First is reflexivity, which says that x is related to itself for all elements of, of, the, po uh, of, of the set P. Second is anti-symmetry. If x and y in P are such that right, this is what we saw in the context of integers also. If you have two 
elements in P such that they are both related to each other in, you know, if X is related to Y and Y is related to X in this way, then they are actually equal. And the last property is transitivity. If X, Y, Z are in P such that X is less than or equal to Y and Y is less than or equal to Z, then right. So, so we have abstracted out the three properties that we saw uh, for integers and any relation satisfying these three properties is called a partial order on P. All right, now a partially ordered set partially partially ordered set or a Po set. So P, O and set. A Po set is a pair where P is a non-empty set and this is a partial order on P. Alright, so this is a very abstract definition. Right now it may not even be making much sense as to what the hell is going on. But with any abstract definition, the way to understand it is via examples. Alright, so let us look at examples. So we have the set of first n natural numbers. n is some fixed natural number. So there is a usual ordering on it. Just the usual way of comparing natural numbers. And once you equip this with that, uh, that ordering, it becomes a Poe set. So I should also mention here, we have defined a partially ordered set as a pair, but we may use phrases like let P be a Poe set. So when we say something like this, we we really mean that we have a we have a relation on P with those three properties, but the symbol for the relation is you know this one. So one is not obliged to use this particular symbol, but this kind of abuse of language is rampant in all mathematics, and it is a good thing that it is. Uh, every time making these you know, you know pairs is not convenient. So when we say let P be a poset, we are implicitly you know suppressing the symbol that uh, we have, which is which is actually the partial order. All right. So when we say this becomes a partial order when equipped with the usual order, we really mean the pair, this comma, the relation, the the usual ordering relation becomes a poset. All right. So that's just a remark on the language that we use. So this I don't want to say anything about. But now for the interesting example of Boolean posets. All right, so let x be some non-empty set. And let p e be equal to the power set of x. Okay. So p right now is just a non-empty set. Uh, now what we do is uh, define a relation on P as if A and B are in P, which is to say that A and B are subsets of the set X, where empty set is also allowed. A could be the empty set and that's perfectly okay. If A and B are in P, then a less than or equal to B if and only if A is contained in B. So this is our definition of the partial order on P. So of course when we call it a partial order we have to actually verify the three properties. So reflexivity is very simple because if 
uh, A is any subset of P, then A is obviously contained in itself, and hence A less than or equal to A holds. Uh, for anti-symmetry, if A and B are two subsets of X, and A contained in B and B contained in A, then A is equal to B. So therefore, anti-symmetry holds. And lastly, if A contained in B and B contained in C, then A contained in C. So this proves transitivity. So basically, the inclusion relation that we have on the set of all the subsets of X is our partial order. So that is a partial order, but of course, the fourth property that we had in integers is not satisfied. It is not true that whenever you are given two subsets of X, one is contained in the other. That is clearly false. All right, so this is, uh, this is for a general X. Let us look at when X is the simple set A comma B. So this one is when X is equal to A comma B, just the two element set. What are all the subsets? The empty set, the singletons A and B, and the full set X. And the empty set is smaller than that because it is contained here. It is also contained here. This guy is contained there and this guy is also contained there. So we have just drawn these lines to depict containments. So this is a very nice diagram uh, denoting or capturing the power set, the power set of X. This is X and this is the power set of X. Similarly, if X is the three element set, oops, then there are eight subsets of X, empty set, the singletons, which somehow I've forgotten to, um, yeah, I have mislabeled a few things. So these are the singletons. Just give me one second. Yeah. So these are the three singletons and then the doubletons, meaning the two element subsets. So of course A is contained here and A is contained there. C is contained here and C is contained there and B is contained here, B is contained there. And then we have the full thing. So there are eight things uh, in the power set of X. They are kind of layered and this looks, uh, looks like a very nice thing. So that's the example of the Boolean power sets. And now let us look at the division power set. So let n be some positive integer. And uh, let dn be this set. <laughs> and what is the power set structure? Or what is the partial order? So define a relation on dn as if a and b are in dn, then a less than or equal to b if and only if a divides b. So that's the definition of this relation and one can easily check that this is uh, partial order, meaning it is reflexive, anti-symmetric and transitive. So that's a very nice partial order on dn and Therefore, we get a power set. Is a power set. And of course, this, this power set structure is different from the usual ordering. In the usual ordering, it is, you know, very simple to visualize, one, two, three, up to n, but here, not every two elements are comparable, meaning the fourth property that we saw in the integers is not true anymore. So this is more interesting or more exotic than your usual ordering. All right, lastly, let us look at this example. This is an abstract example. So suppose we are given two power sets. Now this may be confusing because we are using the same symbol for the relation on P and Q. This is very common, this is a very common practice, although not 
uh, I mean, this is in some sense abuse of notations, but uh, that this is okay. We do this frequently. We just need to be aware as to which one is being used where. All right, so let P and Q be four sets. Then define a relation, which we again denote like this, on P cross Q. This is the Cartesian product of P and Q as uh, A comma X less than equal to B comma Y. So this is an element of P cross Q and that is an element of P cross Q, which means that A and B are in P and X and Y are in Q. If and only if, just give me one second. If and only if A is less than or equal to B and X is less than or equal to Y. So when we write this symbol, we are using this one because A and B are elements of P. And when we are writing this symbol, we are using that one because X and Y are elements of Q. So the way to compare two elements in P cross Q is just you compare them coordinate wise, so to say. And then you can check that this gives a partial order on P cross Q. And uh, this is called the product of two posets. So you can build new posets out, out of old posets just by taking products. All right, so this is all that I wanted to say in this lecture. As usual, like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you next time.